Now impeached President Donald Trump will be looking forward to a trial in the Senate in early 2020. We're looking at probably January, which is when we will find out whether or not the Senate votes to remove him. Now, spoiler alert, I don't think Republicans are principled enough to do the right thing. Maybe you get a Republican or two who's in a vulnerable, you know, purple state that votes to convict. Overall, I don't think anyone is expecting Donald Trump to be removed, although the prospect of removal is so demoralizing and devastating to certain Trump supporters that when asked about this by a CBS News reporter, they said that they believe the response would be violence, if not necessarily from them, than other Trump supporters. Take a look. This is incredibly disturbing. What He's not going to be removed. He's not going to be removed. He's not going to be removed. You feel confident in that? Uh, not by me. My, my, my 357 Magnum is comfortable with that. End of story. And they re remove him in the Senate? Mm -hmm. I think it would cause physical violence in this country that we haven't seen since the, second, since the first civil war. I think it would become the second civil war. I would think that there would be a strong movement. It would be very negative possible violence, not that I'm condoning violence, there'll be a lot of mad Americans, possibly 70, 80,000, 70, 80 million Americans on the loose, not very happy. Uh, what we're seeing is a divided country, you know, both sides are dug in, no one's budging, we have families torn apart, it's, uh, including my family, my daughters are liberal, I'm conservative. Now that this whole thing has been going on, uh, we just had a problem at Thanksgiving. Uh, it's very unfortunate. I wish it never would have happened, this whole, this whole mess we're in. Did he do something wrong? It doesn't appear to me that he did. But I think, you, I think it's going to be very hard for people to change anyone's mind. If you're a Trump supporter, I'll speak for myself. As a Trump supporter, I believe him, and I don't believe that he's dumb enough to say something in front of all those people that would actually get him in trouble. I don't think he's going to get in I really don't agree with him. I mean, he's like the best president. It's not going to work. Now, we keep seeing these types of videos. This is not the first compilation of interviews from Donald Trump supporters where they essentially threaten violence. But yet, we're always talking about the violence of the left in the mainstream media. We're always talking about whether or not it's progressives who are shifting too far to the left, but we don't actually really focus on the threat that is far-right radicalization. Donald Trump has built up a cult following that is loyal to him and will be loyal to him until the very end. So if they feel as if they can defend Donald Trump by resorting to violence. They admit it there. They're willing to do that. He's not going to be removed. He was asked, the first guy, you feel comfortable with that? My Magnum 357 is comfortable with that. End of story. See, if you have this idea that winning elections means conv convincing those people, you are not meant for politics because you have a failure of a strategy. I'm not saying that it's impossible to convince every single Trump supporter. I think there are certain individuals who flipped from Obama to Trump, namely in the Rust Belt in 2016, that are still gettable. Nonetheless, your goal should always be to register new voters. Now, I get that that in and of itself is difficult because we are constantly dealing with voter suppression tactics in every single state to a degree, but disproportionately in red states. And these voter suppression tactics, voter ID laws, voter purges from the rolls, they impact people who are poor, communities of color. So we're basically fighting this uphill battle, and it's incredibly difficult to win in this circumstance, but the only way we can actually have a chance is if we register new voters and galvanize the electorate. Because even if Donald Trump has a small but really passionate core following who will never leave him no matter what, still Democrats are under this illusion that we have to convince those types of people, right? Now, when I talk about, you know, uh, Republicans being ghouls 
and being fascistic and being the party of death and destruction, usually I'm not referring to Trump supporters and Republican Party voters because they are self-interested like any other voter. The problem is that they were misled into believing that voting for the Republican Party is in their self-interest. So they're misinformed. And that's why they're voting for something that actually hurts them. Or maybe they know that voting Republican hurts them, but they just think that, you know, curtailing immigration, um, being conservative on social issues is more important. So I don't know, but these people, most of them are just too far gone. On top of that, the second guy said if they remove him in the Senate, uh, I think it'll cause physical violence. I think it'd become the second civil war. Really? Now, I don't know that that person was threatening violence himself. Maybe he just thought that Donald Trump supporters, his peers, would resort to violence. But is that really a movement that you want to be part of? Like, in the event Bernie Sanders were elected president and did something wrong and was impeached, I would be 100% confident that progressives would not resort to violence. But yet, you're part of that movement and you believe that they would resort to violence if he was impeached. The fact that that's even on anyone's mind shows the state of American political discourse. On top of that, you have the third guy say that, um, you know, there'd be a strong movement, possibly violence, not that he's condoning that. And, quote, what we're seeing is a divide in this country. Both sides are dug in. No one's budging. We have families torn apart, including my family. Now, I get that because each side, you know, we're polarized because we view the other increasingly as a threat and we're dug in and we're not budging. I agree with that statement. But the problem is we can't acquiesce. We can't come together because you guys are supporting a party, whether you acknowledge it or not, that is leading to the death of our planet. They are not just refusing to act when it comes to climate change, but they're actually undoing the progress that we've made, not that we've made much, but they're still undoing the progress. They're cutting social safety net programs like food stamps, which are crucial. This is a cruel party. So we will never come together. And at the way things are now, I can never see anyone coalescing around you know a particular party unless there is some type of political revolution which is what we saw back in you know the days of fdr and also the reagan revolution now that wasn't a good revolution coalescing around reagan wasn't good but nonetheless you know people just accepted that that political ideology at that time was correct and that basically dominated and currently there's this war uh, in this country, not just within the Democratic Party, but generally speaking, among the American American electorate, you have this left-right divide, and, you know, there's an ideological war that we're currently witnessing, and one side has to win, the other has to lose. There's no way that these two sides can come together. Now, I think the best bet is Bernie Sanders winning and uniting the party and the country by basically demonstrating that social democracy is, in fact, the way to go. It heals the country. It helps us. It gives people who are desperate what they need. And, you know, the last person who spoke, it was a woman. She said, did he do something wrong? It doesn't appear to me that he did. Now, my only thought was, would it even matter to you if he did? Like, in the event Donald Trump were caught on camera killing somebody, would you even think that that would be something that he should be punished for. That's the thing with these cults of personality is that no matter what the leader does, there will be some type of rationalization for their actions. So if Donald Trump does something that is horrible and it goes against their own personal values, then they would still convince themselves that that individual is benevolent and, you know, either he made a mistake or, you know, he didn't actually do what we all saw him do. So, what I would like to see in America is us to get away from personality-focused politics and prioritize policy over personality. And I think, by and large, that really is what is going to be conducive to an electoral victory, like Bernie Sanders. You know, he brings the policy and doesn't necessarily have a cult of personality. Uh, but with that being said, there are pockets within this country, on the right and certainly on the left, to be fair, where there are cults of personalities around certain political figures. And that is incredibly damaging because that's when you kind of suspend reason and objectivity and you just follow that person. Even if that person is leading you off of a cliff, 
and they're taking you down a path that is bad for you, you still follow that person. So overall, to see this, I'm not surprised. Again, not the first video where Donald Trump supporters have threatened violence. Nonetheless, you know, it, it really shouldn't be something that we just scoff at and say, well, you know, that's Trump supporters. No, this isn't the way that it should be. You should not think that violence is acceptable if Donald Trump gets removed from office. Impeachment and removal is built into our Constitution to protect democracy. Okay, it's not a coup in the event the person who you like gets, uh, you know, impeached. And it's funny to me, Donald Trump recently put out a tweet where he was uh, basically congratulating, I think, the new president of, of Bolivia. And, you know, he said that she was proof that, you know, they're on the path towards peace and democracy. Let me remind you, that was an actual coup where Evo Morales was ousted, I think in large part due to our influence, the OAS and whatnot. But nonetheless, that was a real coup, but he calls that peace and democracy, but an actual constitutional process here in the U.S. of impeachment, he calls that a witch hunt and a coup. I mean, reality is just flipped on its head and people believe in whatever they think, you know, is going to be better for their narrative. I mean, I don't remember who said this, but I heard it recently and it was so perfect. Republicans and conservatives, they are the ultimate postmodernists because they are the ones who really live in this alternate reality. They kind of make up facts and expect you all to believe those alternate facts and buy into their delusions when we shouldn't do that. We need to make sure that we plant our feet firmly in reality and we, you know, um, try to do what we can to make people more informed. But I don't know what to say. This video is just incredibly disheartening to see. And I hope that these people wake up. But unfortunately, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think they're just too far gone, sadly. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous. And he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.